special verdict, can't make friends Pray for better days, now it's 300k when my day ends Do you remember last night, cause I blacked out In that all white dress with a back out Said be careful with a heart, cause it's fragile Thinking about a past, make a lash out Two men ain't no worries at all Any problem, I'll be there in one call If we like this, you my dog Fanny, you hang pictures on my wall What's going on YouTube? Up next crypto here. And today we have a very special guest on our channel. We have Lance Parker from BankX doing huge things in the community. You might have seen him before on several other interviews. So it's only right. Comes on our channel, talks about his project. How are you doing today, Lance? Oh, good, good, Keon. I've been following your channel for a while. So it's uh, exciting to be uh, be with you on your channel and look forward to it appreciate having you buddy so so lance why don't we get started tell us a little bit about yourself and bank x and how it all kind of came together and then we could go on to the details yeah sure so um i started in technology 20 years ago so it was originally selling seven figure software applications enterprise applications to the cxo level so that was the first sort of 12 years of my career in technology uh, one of the companies i worked for was microstrategy so I sold the first MicroStrategy 7, was very strategic for the company. So people might know about him, Michael Saylor, all the yeah. big, uh, you know, I keep all my treasury and uh, yeah. Bitcoin, right? So mm -hmm. um, so anyway, so so then I, uh, I'm on, this BankX is my fourth project. Um, there's the, everything that we've worked on is tied to the ecosystem. One of those is a wallet solution. Um, and then I built a, a system of, uh, or a few decentralized apps. And it was during that process, Keon, that we were using Paxos as the as the um, stablecoin yeah. and as the medium of exchange in this DAP. And I thought, God, I think I can make a much better stablecoin. And when I really started digging in, um, there seemed to be a lot of things that we could we could change. And that's how BankTech was born. We started this about a year and a half ago, so it's been a year and a half of R and D. And so when we set out, Keon, to, I think, rate the best and most secure stablecoin out there, it had certain capabilities, right? We're the, we're the first stablecoin to pay you interest for minting it the entire time it's in circulation. Instead of pegging to the USD, we peg to the price of one gram of silver. We think that's a much better inflationary hedge. You never pay any fees within the system, just the gas fees. Um, at the end state of the system, fully decentralized. I think what we've learned in the market today is that you can't have any one person or entity managing a, corp managing a corporate treasury or be able to shut the system down. Um, we have a certificate of deposit for staking that, that ex allows you to increase your returns even more. Um, with the BankX system, you never face liquidation of your collateral that you use to mint the stablecoin. So what that does, Keon, is it gives you a very unique opportunity because you're getting paid interest for the stable coin you minted while it's in circulation and there's no liquidation that you can do what's called looping so yeah. your viewers might know about looping where you minted a stable coin and now with bank x you're earning interest so now you can take that stable coin to buy more collateral and then use that collateral to mint more stable coin and then sort of go through that process as many times as you like and then we've got uh, the protocol owns the liquidity of the trading pair. So you don't have to worry about being pulled. And you know that you can always trade in and out of not only the Bank X token, but the XSD stablecoin. So I think after a year and a half, Keon, I think we've done it. I think we've designed the best stablecoin. Um, we worked with mathematicians, uh, economists. We, we, we had an economic audit done by a uh, PhD, Dr. Stalianos Kampakis, who I think is very talented in tokenomics. Yeah. Um, we just had our smart contract security audit done by Coin Fabric. Um, so, so BankX is inspired by proven protocols and proven economic principles that we can we can talk about. But I think that sort of background and general sort of highlights and and what we're bringing to the market um, is pretty. I, I think that's pretty pretty well. Uh, Definitely. High level and, on bank X, yep. and, and something I really like to hear is the experience you have before this project. So launching for other projects, working on this for years. So that really kind of speaks on how proven it is and how many people have been working on it. Something I also want to touch on that you brought up is stable coins. I just kind of want to want our subscribers to get a sense of what are your thoughts on stable coins compared to maybe altcoins or these hundreds of altcoins we see every day and kind of what differs your project 
expect from other ones that are trying to do something similar. Yeah, yeah. So I've been, so 20 years in technology, I started in, in blockchain and crypto sort of 2013 and 14. Amazing. So um, the stable coin sort of interest of mine was that I believe that the key to mass adoption is the stable coin, right? Because uh, right now that's 75% or more of the trades are done um, involving a stable coin. Yeah. Um, but I like to always say that not all stable coins are created equal uh, because there's issues and disadvantages and advantages to those. So what's different about us is is we've taken all the things that work and then and then taken economic principles that we know work and innovated on that on on the on the stable coin, which some of the things I described when we sort of kicked off the interview there um this idea that uh, uh that you can earn interest loop without liquidation uh we've innovated on the protocol own liquidity system where that plays a role in the economic policy of the token uh of the bank x token so there's a couple of innovations that we've done so we just didn't clone a project um we we did base and sort of be or inspired by other projects um, and then brought those innovations. So what we're doing in that whole minting earns interest, looping without liquidation, pegging to silver, um, that uh, protocol and liquidity with its innovation on uh, playing a role in the economic policy. Those are the key innovations that we're yeah. bringing and the differences. Yeah. And I really like to see that because in many ways, it seems like you're pioneering in this space because you're grabbing all these concepts and putting it together in ways that hasn't been done before. Uh, just before we dig more into BankX and the project and it's in a whole as a whole, what are your thoughts of this overall market where a lot of people, especially crypto investors, maybe will be a little very right now because of the bear market we're in. But what do you have to say to those people and kind of your future outlook or does this market not really affect your project because of the way it's set up? Well, I think, I think, Keon, this is a natural sort of bull bear cycle that we're exactly. going through, right? Um, what's interesting about this one is there's been sort of the collapse of some very prominent protocols. I mean, yeah. obviously, Terra Luna, the collapse exactly. and the wiping out of 50 billion in market cap is pretty scary um, yeah. from that perspective. And that just talks to this whole idea that all stable coins are not a created equal. Yeah. Um, the other aspect of, of this is I, I think what we're going to learn from from projects that that have uh, sort of uh, failed, as you could say, or is that I think some of the issues have been that they haven't been decentralized enough. So I think what 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 I would like to see with this sort of coming out of this bear market is that we further move to decentralization where you know, the say a treasury of a protocol isn't controlled by an entity or the developers, that that is more on the blockchain. I think that's what we should come out of this and just continue to move towards the spirit of crypto, which is no single entity, no single point of uh, control or choke point. And so that's the general thoughts I have, Keon, sort of with this you know, crypto market and what's what's happening. But I think it's actually great to launch in a bear market because you can I start agree. to build very passionate members and then you're ready for the next bowl uh right run um, so that's the way i look at it so to me the timing's working out very well um and then everything that we've based bank x on um has has withstand has withstood this this uh sort of collapse of terra luna the, the bear market so we feel really good about the positioning and and sort of the design of bank x absolutely and, and that's something you touched on that i that i really agree with is the whole cycle like just like any other market real estate stocks it's it's a cycle right so there's going to be highs and lows and something i really like to focus on is exactly as you said projects that survive these cycles so if they're striving if they're doing huge things while all this is happening just again like imagine in the bull market what's going to be happening so that's kind of where i want to go with this the year you guys have had a lot of action a lot of things have happened uh, can you kind of talk about the year you guys have had and roadmap wise what you have planned for the rest of 2022 going on to 2023 yeah so so uh we just finished our security audit um so that final report we're hoping to have up very soon um, we're just waiting for some final replies um, but it's been 
I mean, anyone that starts a project in Univate knows the grind that you go through, right? So it's yeah. been a year and a half of R&D. Um, so we will be announcing shortly the, the launch of BankX on the first chain. So Keon, we're going to be launching the stablecoin BankX and the whole protocol on all the EVM compatible chains that matter. So ETH, BSC, Pulse Chain, Avalanche and Phantom, right? So it's looking like our first one and it's I'm pretty much why as we'll say that uh, Binance would be our first one. We're waiting for the ETH merge yeah. to complete. So we want to see that happen and and things be going well with that. Um, and then I think also Pulse Chain's waiting for, for that to happen too. So we like those as sort of the top five um, chains that will be on. And so we... That's another advantage of ours is some stable coins just sort of focus on one chain. We, we are a multi-chain deployment. I think that further talks to the decentralization aspect of BankX, yeah. right? Um, so I think when we launch, the things that people can do is they'll be able to, we'll be seeding the different liquidity pools. So you'll be able to actually buy the XSD stable coin below the peg. So effectively at a discount. And then from there, the things you can do is take advantage of the different rewards, like selling liquidity into the liquidity pools or to the collateral pool for rewards. Um, and then there's certainly the minting earns interest. So you can do that looping process and then staking in our CD, which is exclusively done by the Bank X token. So all of those are things you'll be able to do when we launch, um, most likely on Binance to start off with. So further roadmap is we will have an NFT that become basically turns you into a cabinet member of Bank X. And what that does is it gives you access to a special group and to the founding team um, in our Discord. So that's sort of like a higher level membership. But what it also does is it accelerates your uh, returns in the CD. So you get higher returns for staking the NFT and then um, staking in Bank X in the CD. But then also as we hit certain TVL milestones of the stable coin you also are paid out stable coin um, at those so we'll be releasing that and then further down in sort of 2023 Keon, we will be the first stable coin that will allow you to use an nft to mint a stable coin wow. so we're really after this idea that it's not just j but million dollar jpegs <laughs> that, you're buying, <laughs> that you're buying right so it's yeah. the idea that NFTs will represent ownership of real world financial and digital assets. So being able to take those and mint the stable coin, um, we think is going to be very powerful. And, and so, you know, what what size market it, can NFT digitize the ownership of? Well, it, it looks like four to five hundred trillion potentially. So if the if NFTs get some percentage of that, it's certainly a huge area for us to be able to uh, sort of back our stable coin with with the uh, and a, a real world asset effectively. So that's where we're headed, Keon. And so it's going to be another first for Bank X, you know, first yeah. to pay interest for minting. So when you mint the stable coin, you are not staking it. So you're earning this interest in the form of more Bank X tokens when you yeah. mint it. So you don't have, so now you have this stable coin, you can do anything that you want with. So you, it's really designed for you to be able to create the passive income you like. And then now you have a stable coin that you can go you know, either buy the crypto you were just in or go do some other sort of uh, passive income generating techniques that may be out there. So th those are the sort of the key things. And and so to your point about uh, what's been going on the last sort of year, year and a half is, you know, we've seen the protocols that have we've been, been inspired by. Those have been the ones that have done well. So we are based a lot on Frax.Finance, yeah. um, if you're familiar with that stable yes. coin. So that's a dual token stable coin. It has a mix of everything that works. It's 100% collateralized. So there's always all of the, uh, your your stable coin is backed 100%, but it also has some of the price stabilization mechanisms from algorithmic stable coins that we know work. So the first reaction we get, Keon, is like, oh, you're an algorithmic stable coin. It's yeah. like, well, no, we're, we're so not- So much more to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. exactly. There's much more to it. There, the key thing with Terra Luna and the and I think the ultimate demise was this idea that they didn't have collateral. Yeah. So we are a collateral based stable coin and it's always backed 100 percent. Right. So there's always this insurance or backstop that you can always take your stable coin and redeem from the collateral pool, which is decentralized. No one controls it. Um, not even I can get to it. It's not used to generate interest. That's yeah. not how we generate the interest within the Bank X system. And so you always know that you can go and redeem collateral 
And I think that was the fatal flaw within Terra Luna. And I think they knew it and they were trying to redesign and yeah. and sort of try to start ad collateral, but they were a bit late on that. Yeah. Um, right. So so I would say mostly, so if you look at Frax, they've done very well at maintaining the peg. They've never had a hack um, and they've never had a bank run, even through all of this turmoil that's happened with Terra Luna exactly. and all of that, right? So, so I think we're we're in really good shape from there. Just sort of uh, using that as inspiration. And so, the other project that inspired us, uh, which is how we pay interest, um, which I think is a crucial part that people may want to understand. Now, Richard Hart is very polarizing. So you either like him or not, or you yeah. like Hex or not, right? Um, yeah. I happen to think he's very smart. He's got a very passionate community. I mean, there's some other things where they're a bit combative and things like that, but. What I take away from Hex is the economic principle that they prove, right? Which is this idea that you can inflate a currency by 3.69% to pay rewards for staking. And that staking rate that he causes with that incentive is 9.8% per year. Now I've just seen some other numbers that it's 9.63%, but still the numbers are roughly the same. So you basically have a staking rate or the removal of supply of the token that outpaces the inflation rate, right? So it's a net deflationary effect and that causes or designed to cause price appreciation in the in the uh, HEX token, which we've seen, right? Because that's how when you go to their site, it says uh, APY is 30 to 40%, but most of those returns are paid by price appreciation in the HEX token, right? So what we've done is taken that economic principle proven, proven over a thousand days X just had its thousand day mark, yeah. right? So roughly three years, you could say, right? Um, and we've taken that to a stable coin. So to mint the XSD stable coin, which is the stable coin for Bank X, you need two tokens, just like FRAX. So it's the native blockchain token at whatever the percentage the system is posting. So let's say it'll say, we're on the Binance uh, chain, right? So let's say it'll say 80% BNB, 20% Bank X, right? So that 20% bank X, you are locking up on the blockchain in the collateral pool. So that's effectively a staking event because you're removing it from supply. So what we do is inflate that same bank X token to pay the rewards because we are incentivizing that behavior in the same way that Hex does with the CD. So our CD works very similar to Hex because we want that in that net deflationary effect. So both of these are a net deflationary effect within yeah. the Bank X token. So that's how we pay interest. We're not like Terra Luna, where we are, uh, hey, put it in an anchor pro protocol and yeah, it might be a little suspicious. Maybe we're taking money from, you know, current uh, new money in paying. For, we don't yeah. know if that was a right. We don't know if that yeah. was a, a pyramid or not. Exactly. So we're we're very transparent in how we're paying interest. And and most importantly, we have no involvement in it. Right. So the system is doing all these calculations and things like that. So very proven protocols, proven economic principles, and then our own innovations on it. I think we have it, Keon. I'm excited oh, to, to launch this and see what the market has. Like no one has done this in crypto. Yeah. No one has done this in stable coins. And I look at stable coins again, as we talked about, as the key to mass adoption. If we can make this stable coin be for the individual, right? So when you look at what's happening here, we have a stable coin where you own the collateral, you're minting the currency, you're earning interest, and then you can loop without liquidation, and then you can stake in the CD. It's always just you, your wallet, and the blockchain. So there's yeah. never anyone in between managing the treasury, sort of like even when you go all the way back to the evolution of other stable coins where Tether is I mean, that's a centralized USD exactly. stable coin. So yeah. we are the exact opposite of that. Decentralized, not pegged to the dollar. No one's managing your um, treasury, right? So what Tether's doing is they are taking the dollars in the bank and lending it out, using doing some things to try to generate interest for themselves. And so if they mismanage it, you're holding the bag. And then it can be shut down through regulation or they just might mess up and, you know, change things in the protocol that caused some issues. So we didn't like that approach at all. That's sort of like the, the other side yeah, of generic, the generic, Exactly. Yeah, no, <laughs> I agree. On the other side of what we're doing, right? No, for sure. And I, and I love to see that 
really the use of data that you guys have. So thousand days, proven methods, how, how the economics behind it work. It's something very different than other projects. I just kind of want to move it over a little. Something I see you guys focusing on a lot is the sacrifice phase and talking about sacrificing crypto to get X points. Um, maybe for myself or someone who understands it and sees that, they'll know what it means right now. But for other investors that are just checking this out, because again, it hasn't been done before, for, can you kind of talk about the sacrifice phase and what the whole concept of sacrificing crypto for points means when it comes to bank x yeah great um so the sacrifice phase is a different structure for the community to be involved in that basically uh does not involve or does not fall under the laws of the sec yeah. so um what it is is you're sacrificing crypto so you you surrender it um, it's no longer, you're basically giving it up for a political statement. And for BankX, that is the idea that currency should be created by and benefit the individual. So that's our political statement. And so for doing that, you earn X points and, and you get those in a volume bonus. So that is the reason to be involved in because you get all of these bonuses that boost your X points. And then those X points convert to the BankX token on a one-to-one -one ratio prior to launch. And so uh, prior to launch, you can you know, sort of build up your X points that convert to the bank X token. So we have a referral bonus that boosts your X points in addition to the volume bonus. And then our uh, volume bonus goes down 0.25 every week until October 13th when it ends. And, um, and then, so right now we're on a pulse chain sacrifice phase. Yeah. So this is the first time I'm announcing it, Keon, that we have not uh, announced this yet, but uh, when you sacrifice on the pulse chain sacrifice phase, those X points you earn will be copied on our avalanche and phantom deployment. So it's one sacrifice for three chains. And so if there's a delay in pulse chain uh, sort of launch, you're going to get all of those three chains. So one sacrifice, three chains. So we duplicate all that. The other thing is if you sacrifice 500 USD or more, you get that back in the XSD stable coin. Okay. You get almost X points in uh, converting to bank X. Um, and then you have, uh, we have a leaderboard bonus. So the top wallets in USD value, you get another, a further bonus. And then we introduce something new called the time machine bonus. So if you sacrifice in blocks, in a single sacrifice in blocks of 25,000 USD value, you move back one week or your volume, meaning your volume bonus goes up 0.25. So let's say you're at the 4X volume bonus week. If you sacrifice 100,000, that's four blocks of a uh, 25K. Yeah. So that would move you back four weeks or to the 5X volume bonus week. Yeah. So you go from four to 5X based on that larger amount. So we've done that very unique to the sacrifice phase. So it's a great way to involve the community and then also build up potential uh, users of your system as you as you launch. So you can learn all about that at our website, www.bankx.io. Love to see it, man. And guys, all links will be in the description so you can check it out in more detail, especially their communities. That's kind of where I want to move this conversation. Now, Lance, can you tell us the importance uh, and how strong your community is? Again, you mentioned earlier, the people that are with you during the bear market, it, you, you build a much more loyal base. Something I find that this bear market did, it pushed out a lot of people that really weren't weren't full believers of the vision and where crypto was going. Can you kind of talk about how strong your community is, what they've been doing to help, and kind of your overall take on how strong and important community is to the success of projects? Yeah, absolutely. So I think there's two things, right? There's the, the building of the protocol, and then there's the building of the community and the users. And so those two things are, are crucial. So we spend a lot of time on that, interacting with our community and, and sort of doing a lot of things to reach out. A lot of those are, are interviews like this where we can yeah. reach to new people in, in crypto. So most of our interaction is on Telegram. So we, we have community members that have helped to sort of review the code. They help us get the message out and do some of the marketing. It's been a lot of great suggestions coming back from the community. So um, we, some of them have been, you know, turned into friends. So we have people coming from overseas to join us at uh, PulseCon, which we'll be at next week. So we Amazing. go Friday and we'll be there that entire week. So if you're there, let us know. Sure. Um, our telegram is at bankxio. 
Um, and, and so we did have an issue. There was a bit of gaming of a referral system on our Telegram. So we, we've done, I think, a pretty good job of removing some of the bots in Telegram. So, yeah. you know, we, we're trying our best to get those numbers to what so it has an accurate representation. I think we're pretty close to it. Yeah, um, so I just want to make that point. But yeah, I mean, this is, uh, we're building this for the individual and for crypto. I want to be part of the um, part of the solution that moves the crypto uh, field down the, you know, continue the progression and replacing the legacy financing and banking system. So um, it's all built for, for crypto and then for the individual. So we're, we're really focused on that. Love to see it, man. And I like how you mentioned the long term um, because we spoke a little bit about short term, like what we're doing this year and your future for next year's roadmap. Where do you see BankX being and more of a long term horizon, like the three to five years being a pioneer in the space? Where do you see this project taking us and taking the community as a whole? Yeah. So we want to bring more people into crypto that aren't in crypto, right? So I think uh, so I think there's a three-phased approach that we're looking at is certainly let's get to the current crypto community and then start with those passionate members in a bear market and then build it during a bull market. And I think this, the next phase to that is this, uh, this idea that because we're a stable coin, we are a great solution for other protocols that have treasury. So how do we uh, get them to use XSD as, uh, as part of their treasury. And then if they have other crypto, using that to mint the stable coin, right? So I think that's that's sort of the next phase. Um, and then, then I think there's a system of decentralized applications that exclusively use the stable coin, where we can bring businesses that could use the dApps that are furthering uh, sort of efficiency and time and cost using the blockchain and then having our stablecoin as the medium of exchange. So one example of a dApp like that, Keon, could be where corporations are starting to move to crypto as treasury. And so um, having a dApp that would allow them to use that. And then once they have the XSD stablecoin, using that as a payment system within um, within their sort of between their vendors and supply chain, right? So they have crypto, they move into crypto as their corporate treasury, and now it's sitting there idle. Okay mint the XSD stablecoin, earn interest for the corporation from the treasury, and then use the XSD stablecoin as a payment uh, medium of exchange. So that's where we're, yeah. sort of, you know, that could change, but that's sort of how we're looking at it, sort of three to five year range. And then I think we're gonna have a lot of problems with USD um, with the continued inflation and printing. Yeah. So we're in a great position as all of these USD stablecoins potentially have an issue when that happens that yeah. they would be very interested in sort of a one gram of silver pegged stablecoin. And so we're positioning for that event. Love that to event. see it, man. And I'm sure you'll reach that. If you guys move at the pace you've been moving at, then maybe even be before three to five years. So really love to see it. And guys, something to note that Lance talked about is transparency. So doing all these interviews, linking with the community, this isn't something you see projects doing. And it really, really ends up being a big outlier, getting in the community, speaking to the people, getting their thoughts, hopping on channels like this. And we're really happy to have you, Lance. Do you have any closing remarks, things you want to say to our community or all the people watching this on what to expect from BankX and from yourself. Yeah, so we're gonna con we're continuing to hit our hit our uh, uh, work milestones, and we'll we'll be launching soon. Um, you can go to our website www.bankx.io. All of our links are there to our socials. YouTube is very good because that has different videos, so you can have an explainer video. There's a learn more section. Uh, where we go into a couple minute videos of different aspects of BankX. And then there's a fundamental section where it takes a little more detailed look at it. And then I teach a master class on BankX if you want to learn more. And then we have a doc section, which has our uh, white paper, economic audit. I have a DeFi white paper on the future of cryptocurrency. And then um, we'll have the smart contract security audit up there. So it's all starts at the website and socials and doc section. And that'll really have everything you need to uh, learn about Bank X. And then our sacrifice phase is, is in place now. And you've got one sacrifice, three chains. And uh, that on our website, we link to the sacrifice page there. 
Amazing, man. Guys, all links will be in the description. Thank you for your time, Lance, and really sharing with us in our community with your experience and projects and everything else you are doing. I hope to have you on this channel down the line. We're yes, going to be coming out with an explainer video as well, even though you guys have your own, just kind of highlighting the website so our viewers could see it. Thanks so much for your time, Lance. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Cam.